Hey, so I wanted to come in and talk about Bonjour Tristesse by Francois Sagan. This was published when she was only 18, so she's died now, Francois Sagan. Um, but this edition, I do like the cover of this. Um, it's got an introduction by Rachel Cusk, who I like. Um, so her introduction was good. I didn't read it till after I read the book though, because I don't normally do that because I don't want it to ruin the book for me. And I like to think for myself as I read. In this, it's the story of Cecile. And she's 17, her mother's died, and she's flitting about being a young girl. So um, it's set in, I think, the south of France. And their da her dad is like, I guess, some rich bourgeois guy. And since their mother died, he's become a kind of like bachelor and he is like dating young women and he takes Cecile out with him to clubs and they stay out till like four in the morning and drink. For a book that was published in 1954, it honestly reads like it could have been written not that long ago. It doesn't feel that old. Um, and the tone of Cecile is so, so good. It's almost unbelievable that Francois Sagan wrote this when she was 18. Um, so even though Cecile is 17 and she was only 18 when she wrote it, Francois, um, it reads like a mature writer reflecting on youth. Even though it's a young person's tone, she, it feels very self-aware and conscious in a way that um, a young person doesn't normally have. Um, so it's a really, really good read. Um, if I just read you the first scene. Um, so this is the opening chapter. This strange new feeling of mine, obsessing me by its sweet languor, is such that I am reluctant to dignify it with the fine, solemn name of sadness. It is a feeling so self-indulgent and complete in itself that I am almost ashamed of it, whereas I had always looked upon sadness as being a worthy emotion. Before I did not know what sadness was, though I knew what it was to be languorous, to have regrets, and more rarely, to feel remorse. Today it is as if I am enfolded in some silken thing, soft and enervating, that sets me apart from others. So, just from that setup, and especially after reading the novel, um, every single sentence has more of a weight to it. Just the opening that it's this strange new sensation that's triggering the kind of narrative, um, I love that kind of psychological hinging of the novel. So I think that's really, really well done. Cecile is basically, I think she's meant to be like an, a version of Francois Sagan, but there is a plot to the book. So the the actual story is only like a hundred, it's a hundred pages. And so it's quite quick. Um, it's like short and snappy and it's just a like perfect length for the kind of story that it is. It's a story where her father basically starts dating her who was her mum's best friend so her mum's friend Anne is this like glamorous sophisticated is she a spinster I mean she I guess she is she would be viewed as a kind of spinster but she I don't know she kind of feels more like a glamorous divorcee than a spinster and Anne steps in and it's kind of like Cecile um like, you're doing really shit at school. You're doing, like, the most... You're dating this, like, fit French boy who you shouldn't be dating because you're only 17. You're coming out to clubs with your father when you shouldn't be doing that. You're a young girl. You should be focusing on school and being a lady. Um, and it's kind of odd because Cecile's not sure how to treat Anne. She's not sure whether this is what her mother would be saying to her if her mother was still alive or if she should kind of resent this presence. So she kind of does resent her in a way that you probably resent a parent saying that to you anyway. So it becomes this sort of shucking off that Cecile has to do, where she's warring against this woman that's entered into her life. Um, and really, I think Anne also kind of represents the woman Cecile could see herself being in the future. So it kind of becomes this kind of, idealized version of herself that she's railing against so her father becomes engaged to Anne and then Cecile sets about this plot to just destroy their relationship so it's um it's really really fun and 
uh, the ending is just perfect. I wasn't quite sure how it was going to end, but I knew it, I'd had the sense that it was going to end well. Um, but the ending, I don't want to spoil it, but it's it's really, really good. Like, if I think if you like Muriel Sparks novels, you like this book. Um, it is like a summary read, I guess. You would call it a summary read because the cover is by the beach. But it is mostly set. It is set over the summer and it's set where Cecile just, you know, flops about on the beach and drinks a lot. And apparently Swansois, Francois Sagan um, was like a raging alcoholic for most of her life. So it is quite sad to think that, um, you know, when she came out with this and she was like an instant lauded writer in France that her life kind of peaked when you're young and then it kind of goes like that. Like, I don't want to be like that. I feel like that's probably what's going to happen to Kylie Jenner, maybe. Like, she's like had, she's like a, meant to be like a billionaire now, but I'm like, and then where'd you go? Like, are you just set for life? But I don't know. Like, what do you think would happen with Kylie Jenner in the future? <laughs> right, and veering back onto this book, um, it also comes as part of, um, there's two stories in it. So A Certain Smile is kind of like a sequel to Bonjour Tristesse, where um, the girl in it is, I think she's gone to uni in Paris. So she's kind of flitting about being a student and dating all the men. So I like the story as well. The second one was a good story. But um, the first one is the one I want to focus on. When I picked this up, I picked this up about two years ago. And I was just in the Waterstones in Arndale, the like shopping centre in Manchester. And I just saw the cover and was like, ooh, you know. I only saw it like that on the aisle because it wasn't on its own. You know, like in Waterstones and in bookstores, they have like the tables where they put all the books out so you can see them nicely. This wasn't like that. This was just on the shelf like that. And skimming through it, I saw the cover. And I'd never heard of Francois Sagan, but um, I do want to read more French writers. I want to get into like the French symbolists just to read them. I feel like that'll be really, very interesting to read. Um, and then when I read the blurb, I was like, oh, this sounds so fun. And it was really fun. So if you're looking for a short, fun, snappy read, pick this up. All right, bye. Hey, Stephanie. Hey.